Hello, everyone. Um, to realize its true meaning. This is the first time I, I, as I said it, I thought, what if there is no meaning? You know, I'm going to talk about haiku, and there's great pleasure in it. And I am very serious around it. But what if there's no meaning? And actually, we're feeling that way with what's happening, the exploitation over in Ukraine and Russia and the land there. It's as if, you know, it doesn't go back. You get to see these pictures of ruined cities. Um, I wanted to read to you just from, we're going to go way back for a minute, from Tu Fu from 700, just two lines from a poem of his. The whole country devastated, only mountains and rivers remain. We've gotten so sophisticated, I wonder if mountains and rivers will remain. And I'll just read from Macho, when he went 500 years later to an area that had just a, a senseless war, brother against brother, cousin against cousin, and he felt it, and he wept, summer grasses, all that remains of great soldiers, imperial dreams. And I think many of us feel that way now, and yet we feel impotent. Roshi Joan did a beautiful um, essay, if you could see it at Upaya's um, website. I don't usually read anything on websites, but I read this. And um, it helps, though nothing helps. You see that destruction. I know my friends in Germany who I've been in touch with are heart sick. I mean, everybody is, but Germany was just decimated in World War II. I mean, of course, they started it, and you know, we have all these rationalizations, but it's no longer should we have that kind of violence and that kind of ignorance, but we do. So um, I wrote a book called Three Simple Lines to study haiku. And haiku is really, I don't think there are a lot of original things in Japan, but this is original and comes from Japan. And I wanted to see the roots. I wanted to understand them. Who, who was writing? And because I'm a writer, and this is a path of writing. But what I didn't say, if you read the book carefully, I went one chapter where I go to study haiku with the group. But I don't write haiku. I've been too afraid of it. I think I have thought of haiku as the holy of holies. I'm not sure where I got that. Um, I studied with Allen Ginsberg a long time ago, and he said, you don't even have to worry about syllables 575, that you can just write the only thing that matters is that when you hear one, you feel, ah, a little jump, the, the mind catches up, ah, ah. For, so, um, but in, what is this now, March, in November and October, I was in the Pacific Northwest, and I had three weeks all by myself. And I said, come on, Nat. You can write haiku, or at least try. You know, um, it's unusual for me. I've written novels, essays, um, self-help, which is thinly disguised memoirs. I've done everything. I've written book, two books of poetry. But 
someplace along the line, I decided that haiku was the holy of holies, and I couldn't do it. And um, always, if you have that attitude, that's exactly what you should be doing. I only realize that now. You'd see me in bookstores reading haiku, getting lost sometimes for two or three hours in the bookstore. And then I did buy the book. But, you know, <laughs> really just reading haiku, and it immediately took me to another place. I loved it. And I thought, well, you don't have to do everything. Don't write haiku. But because this is probably, this is the beginning of our haiku weekend, um, which I think we, we need to figure it out, Kaz and Joan and Clark. Is this the 10th year or the ninth year? But it's a lot. And I so, don't know. Uh, what? I said, I, I, it's so many years, I don't remember. I know, that's how I feel. But I'm sure we could look back in some record. Um, so anyway, so I decided, come on, Nat, you can do it. Oh, look, the, it, I move and then, the, no, that's helpful. Noah, can you put that back? Well, myself, and then I see other people at the top. Okay, that's, that's helpful because <laughs> I can't feel you. So um, I decided that I, this is what I would do. Writing practice that a lot of you know, where you um, writing down the bones, that's 35 years this year, where you just go and it's exactly parallel to zazen, to sitting. But you keep your hand mood, moving, no good or bad. And no black or white, you just go. And you learn about your mind. So I was too chicken to just rawly face haiku. So I would write for two sides of two pages so I didn't have to look at a clock. And then I made myself, I'm going to show you. And then I would make myself, when I did two sides of two pages, I had to leap and do, do you see it? Here's my prose, <laughs> here's my prose. And then I'd have to leap and it didn't matter. I never reread them. I just said, do it, Natalie, come on. And you know, really think about it. If you want to run and you never run, so you run the first day you put on your sneakers. I guess you don't call them sneakers anymore. And you get out there and oh, you go maybe half a block and you're exhausted, but you made the effort. And then the next day you go three quarters of a block, but it's meeting it, meeting it. So I said, okay, we're gonna apply that. So I, um, I would write prose, two sides of two pages, go because I'm comfortable with that. I've done that for 30, 50 years. And then I would leap and just grab haiku. Not good or bad, just grab haiku. And um, then I had, and I was alone and I, I thought, I am so good, you know. I'm, and then I reread them and I thought, well, there may be haiku, maybe. So, um, my friend called and I decided I had a whole plan and I decided I said to her you know I'm writing haiku now could I read you some and I had about 30 at the time you know in different parts of the notebook and um I don't know if you've ever experienced this wait a minute how do I, if you ever experienced this but um when you read something aloud and someone's listening or an audience is listening, you can tell if it's shit or not immediately. <laughs> you don't even have to ask them afterwards <laughs> because what happens is mind reflects mind. And if I'm not present, your mind reflects it and wanders off. But if I have a good haiku or my writing is present, you can't go away. I've got you. So um, 
I read these haiku to her and I could feel like it was like a, I was a dead, I was dragging a dead horse across the, <laughs> across the phone wires. <laughs> and then she hesitated. We're good friends. So she said, Natalie, they're awful. <laughs> <laughs> they're just awful. And I was in such despair because here I was working on it, really trying. So for a week, I, I wandered around the Pacific Northwest writing prose, <laughs> writing prose. And then I, um, I thought, you can't give up that quickly. I need a haiku mentor. <laughs> And I remembered that a man many years ago sent me a book of his haiku and it was dedicated to me. And evidently he's written lots and lots of haiku and lots of books. And the haiku were good and I wrote him and thanked him. And um, I think recently he wrote a beautiful uh, um, review of my book, Three Simple Lines. So I thought, what was his name? What was his name? Even now, I can't remember it. I look, wow. I know the last name, which is hard, is Epstein, because of you know the polit what's gone on with Epstein. But his first name is not Epstein, and he's not. I don't know. How, forgive me, please, mentor. Wait, I have a haiku by you someplace. I'll, I'll point it out later. I'll point it out later. So um, I wrote him and I said, would you be my haiku mentor? And he said, oh, sure, sure. You know, I thought it's not too hard because it's only three lines. You know, if someone sends me a manuscript, it's like, forget it, but it's three lines. So I said, could I send you some haiku? And of course I sent him the 30 haiku that my friend said was terrible. And then he kept sending me essays and it turns out you cannot believe what is going on with modern haiku. There's magazines, there's um, the stuff on the uh, internet, there's all kinds of things and all over the world and tons of essays and people have very strong opinions like anything else, I guess. Even haiku, three lines, they fight over it. They write an essay, then somebody responds, and then it just goes on. So I sent him. And so he, he kept sending me books that I should look at, you know, like here, modern haiku. I should order it and things like that. And I did everything he said, and I read everything he said. And, um, but really, I was waiting. Is he going to read my haiku? <laughs> What's he going to say? Because you can't give up. And he wrote back, you know, several weeks went by. Robert Epstein. Isn't that? Yeah, it's Robert. Okay, so um, how do you know? Oh, okay. Okay. So um, that's how the mind works. <laughs> if you don't look things up. They rise eventually like dead fish, <laughs> the thoughts. Okay, so I, he sent me back all 30 haiku, and he adjusted them a little to help me, like add the, add in, you know, just he adjusted them a little. And then at the bottom, he said, Natalie, you are a haiku writer. And he said, um, because you know about death. Well, that's all I needed was someone to say yes. And so I just kept going. I kept going. And then I wanted to, there's all this argument about 575, which Clark Strand definitely uh, holds. And then for a long time, I held, because of Ginsburg and the Beat Generation, which made haiku very popular, that you didn't need to count syllables. All you needed was that leap of mind. 
So I started counting syllables because it gave me a structure, something, because otherwise there was nothing. You know, I just didn't have any feeling for it. And so I want to read you. This is so wonderful. I, this is something new. This is what's happening with modern haiku. Richard Wright, who wasn't modern, you know, who wrote um, Black Boy and Native Son, he moved to, um, to France in his last year and a half, and he was sick, and he wrote haiku all the time for comfort. Fabulous haiku. And I hope you get this. This isn't probably the cover you'll get. I got this many, many years ago when it first came out. Richard Wright haiku with an introduction by Julia Wright, which is great. But I want to show you, he does five, seven, five. You don't need to count them when I read them to you because you could just trust me, they're five, seven, five. But listen to what they're doing in Brooklyn with Richard Wright's haiku. I, I just think it's terrific. Okay. So this is at the Brick Arts Media. You probably can't see it. It's really big letters on the bricks of this art media place. It says, could this melody be sung in other countries by, oh, by other birds? Could this melody be sung in other countries by other birds? And I'm going to tell you, I just love it. This is at the Shake Shack, on, if you're in Brooklyn, at the Pedestrian Plaza, Willoughby and Adams Street, is a big haiku on the wall, a spring so sky so clear that you feel you are seeing into tomorrow. Isn't that beautiful? You get it, the leap? A spring sky so clear that you feel you are seeing into tomorrow. Now this one I love. It's on at the Ann Taylor store. I think that's kind of conservative women's clothing. And I think my mother used to shop there. And um, if they had it back then, Ann Taylor. But, but they blew it open because in Brooklyn, the Ann Taylor sh store has a train crashes past a butterfly still as stone on the humid earth. Okay, here's one at Mark Morris Dance Center. Isn't it a pleasure hearing them? The creeping shadow of a gigantic oak tree jumps over the wall. The creeping shadow of a gigantic oak tree jumps over the wall. And then one more, oh, I have to do a few of these more. The 10 Star Deli and Grocery on Myrtle Avenue. I don't know how many of you are from Brooklyn, but go see this. Follow wherever the tree branches make arches in the torrid sun. And this is the Four Star Candy Deli on Myrtle Avenue. Leaving its nest, the sparrow sinks a second, then opens its wings. A new, a new sparrow. Leaving its nest, the sparrow sinks a second, then opens its wings. So he did beautiful haiku. And he did 575. So Clark, I don't know if you're out there, but I'm doing, I was doing 575. And if I stop doing 575, afterwards I count them. And if it goes longer than nine in the middle, I figure out something. Okay, so I'm, I'm a little, I'm learning to go back and forth. I'm using everything I can. So the writer that I've done for 50 years is starting to wake up in me 
in haiku. And, um, okay, so. I want to say that the probably the line I read in Basho that kept me from writing was, he said, if you write five haiku in a lifetime, you're a haiku writer. If you write 10, you're a master. And I, I thought he means like the holy of holies. And I can't do that. But really what haiku is, is just like everything else. You have to practice. You have to read, you have to write, and be willing to write terrible haiku. Roshi and I are going to start the Bad Haiku Society. You always have to be willing to write bad ones. So you have to read, write, hang out in nature. And one of the other things I learned that I hadn't paid attention to, and this really helps, and I'm going to read you some modern haiku, and we're going to see if they have it in it, every one. The season is called kiga in Japanese. But modern haiku, you could do anything you want. But I found that it was really helpful to do that, to, do, to write, um, to grab a season. <laughs> it just kind of gave me five, seven, five, and then grab a season. OK, here's the other thing. And this is a writing thing that everyone should know. You've heard it. Don't tell, but show. You don't talk about something. You enter it and show the person, which actually, if you've heard about koans, koans are like that. You don't tell someone, oh, yeah, I know that koan. Um, original mind, yeah, I have an original mind. I'm so smart. That, that isn't it. You have to show your understanding. And you have to find it in you. This is true of haiku, too, and all writing, and probably everything. You don't want to listen to someone who uh, talks about running or talks about having dieting. You want to see them <laughs> dieting. You want to see them you know, running. And then you listen to them, but not before. So don't tell, but show. So uh, when I'm done with writing practice, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just go. And then uh, I jump into the haiku. And I, then I say, Nat, Nat, these are all abstract. Grab something and throw it in. <laughs> Grab anything. His foot, her foot, his zafu, anything. They, that's the new word. They, zabatan. Their zabatan. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. You're going to hate me by the end. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so this is very, very important things. And you're a thing. I'm a thing. That's a thing. The ceiling is a thing. Their foot is a thing. His foot is a thing. We're all us and not us. So put things in your haiku, just like in your writing. And you know, Zen, Definitely, the koans, you don't have to understand koans, but like um, a, a monk will come to the Zen master, this is in ancient China, and he'll say, what is Zen? And the teacher will lean over and say, could you pass me the pitcher of water? And then they sit, he passes it, and then they sit, and the monk is waiting and said, says, so? And the teacher said, you didn't get it? <laughs> he said, no. And the teacher says, could you pass back? Here, could you take this water and put it back? The pitcher. That was it. And there, there were tons of them. Uh, Hello, you just came in as a, yes. I, what, what should I do to study Zen? 
did you have breakfast? Did you have cereal? Yes, thank you. Now go wash your bowl. Things, and you see there's pictures. They're real things. So um, that's very important. It, you, it's everything. It's everything. I remember Katagiri Roshi, by the way, yesterday was Katagiri Roshi, who I studied with him in Minneapolis for 12 years. Yesterday was his 33rd memorial. And I guess in Japan, the 33rd memorial is the last time you could talk to him. So um, people die. He kept telling me that. Just for a minute in that direction. Okay, when I was here two years ago with Wendy Johnson, we discovered that Katagiri Roshi and Dogen were born on the same day, January 19th, 1,200 years apart. And you begin to believe in astrology. And guess who I found also was born on January 19th? I found out two weeks ago. I'm not going to let you guess because you'll never guess. Hakuin. Hakuin was born on January 19th. So if you have someone that's pregnant now, tell them to hold on <laughs> till January 19th because you want to be born that day. Actually, I do have a student in Mexico who was born then. Okay, so things. And um, there's a love of things, a, uh, a care. I remember I had a student who visited Katagiri Roshi, and she said, what is Zen? And he said, here's a book. I could do this, or I could do this. That is Zen. So it's a caring. Many of us do yoga. Don't throw your blocks around and your straps. Each thing matters. And with that, you can write haiku. So what I thought I would do um, is I'm going to read you some haiku. So what I did was I went to where Robert Epstein told me to go. I went to these modern haiku. I, lie. I read through a lot of magazines and wrote down physically, because I wanted it in my body. I wrote down the haikus I loved and the name of the person who wrote it. Now, I have what my interest in the old Japanese was they had a life of haiku. I don't know these separate people but they're wonderful haiku. So let's listen to some of them. And because I don't have you in the classroom, unfortunately, um, notice that there are things in every one. There's nature, a connection in nature, and maybe, and is there a season, okay? Because modern haiku might have taken off. Okay, and done what they, it wants, which it should. Okay, so I'm going to read you some. These are modern haiku from this, not from this magazine, but another magazine. I think I went through a lot of them. And uh, you can, what I really like about this, why I ordered it, it's a real book. They have a lot on the internet, which a lot of you will be happy with. I didn't, I wasn't happy. Okay, you ready? Okay, these are... I think they're terrific. Tell me if you don't think so. Dusk, where wild apples have rolled to a stop. That's by Burnell Lippy. It's a pretty good name. Dusk, where wild apples have rolled to a stop. News of his passing, I walk my feet 
through morning dew. That tells us the season, unless we're in Florida and there's morning dew all the time. News of his passing. Listen to this. I walk my feet like you have, they're an object. <laughs> I walk my feet through morning dew. Frank Hoover, Hooven. Okay, ready for the next one? No headstone, the rosemary bush finds its shape. Okay, I'll read it again. No headstone, the rosemary bush finds its shape. Can you follow that? Can you all? Can you? Yeah, good. That's Sandra Simpson. Now this is what, once you start, you could go cuckoo because they've really stretched out haiku. And a poet, I don't have it with me tonight, told me of a whole new form that they're taking off from haiku. But listen to this. This is a haiku by Christopher Pachel. Nevertheless, all colors. <laughs> People are going berserk. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, fall colors. Spring thaw, what I meant to tell her. Spring thaw, what I meant to tell her. Joey Russell Bridgins. I have one on this page I'm going to read later that I almost fell over. Oh, nighttime in the hospice aquarium, the pulse of fish gills. Joyce Clement. Nighttime in the hospice aquarium, the pulse of fish gills. So there are haiku every place. And of course, I pick ones that I'm drawn to. Childhood summers, the weight of a goldfinch, Holly Rainwater. I got to check the time. Okay, I'm going to read you the one. Oh, there's so oh, Earl Keenan. I just have to read this one. Persimmons, the opossum grins with 50 teeth. And this one I want to read. I don't know, it, it just knocked me over. And I think I actually sent it when I was in the Pacific Northwest. I sent it to uh, Roshi Joan on a postcard. She almost fell over that she got a postcard even before reading the haiku. Okay, ready? End of the world, I blow apart a dandelion. End of the world, I blow apart a dandelion by Gary Gay. Okay, um, I could go on and on. And I, you know, I have notebooks full now of haiku that I love. But um, so I'm working haiku and I'm working another part of me that I've avoided. I don't know what part it is, but I, something where I was very much didn't want to go, I'm pushing myself, even if they're lousy. So, um, but I know, I'm realizing, thinking back, I did a lot of sitting outside and the Pacific Northwest, which is different than New Mexico, it rains and rains and this gray skies, and I was starving for that. So I would sit zazen, sometimes for an hour at a time, in the rain, over a little edge. So my knees would get wet, and, but I'd sit and I'd sit. And I knew something had changed. Okay, this is my advertisement for haiku, but I'm gonna show you something too. For about five years, there's a uh, koan I've been playing with. Quickly, quickly, without thinking, B 
before your parents were born, what is your original face? And it really caught me because nothing happened before my parents were born. You know, they're the center. That's where I come from. So it was very curious for me and interesting. So, um, and I think if you look closely, I was pushing at it someplace in uh, the three simple lines. I was trying it. So I was sitting in the rain and, and what I would always do for five years, not every time, but I'd sit for a half hour, mostly just sit. And, um, and then at the end I'd say, okay, what's your original face? And I'd come up with an answer and I think, oh, that's genius, that's terrific. And then the next morning it was like, give it up, Nat. And here I am working haiku, working haiku, and I'm breaking open without realizing it. A part of my mind, I think that was stuck. And so I was sitting, it really rain, imagine it gray. That might not be exciting for you, but living in New Mexico, that's the cat's meow. And, um, okay, Nat, what's your original face? And I thought, that's it, very quietly. And the next day I asked, the next day, and it kept just growing in me. So I um, went into the house and I did a painting because in the Washington, the state of Washington, they have 26 kinds of apples and do the plaid one for the, with the writing. 26 kinds of apples and eight kinds of pears. So I was in love with pears. So I came and painted a pear. There it is. Could you see it on the top? And I had a haiku underneath. And then I'm still so square around haiku. <gasps> I, oh, you're not supposed to do that. That's that's terrible. I mean, here, this is how square I am about haiku. <gasps> and I contacted Robert Epstein and I said, I'm so sorry. That's so no dignity. And, you know, and he said, Natalie, it was lovely. Really? It's okay. And then I had two pairs and we'll show you this painting. And I wrote my, what I thought was my first haiku. It's not great, but I, and I painted this, okay. And this was my late autumn in the full moon shadow, two pairs. I, I can't tell you how happy I was. I was as happy as when I figured out the original face. Late autumn in the full moon shadow, two pairs. So I just want to say one other thing, and then we'll wind down. This morning, when I was putting this all together to talk to you, I just got so excited about haiku that I thought haiku is everywhere. And my old friend who helps me with the garden was out back doing the compost, and I brought him a warm egg, a hard-boiled egg but it was warm still. And I thought, this is a haiku. I thought everything is a haiku. And it's true when I paint that everything, when I come out of painting, I could draw that corner, that rock, everything is a painting. So then I said to myself, and what about writing, Natalie? No. It's so deep and so inside me. No. So what's your no? Okay. <laughs>